The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Steve, I have no broadcast of sound. I have nothing. We're having well, hello. A of a Welcome to Spindle. Problem here. Oh, we got trouble. Well, hello. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. It's Friday. I'm Chip. I'm CJ. And I'm Carlos. We Sorry. had a bit of an intro problem with sound. God. I hate it when people mess with this soundboard because it drives me nuts. It's sabotage. Uh, well, no, it's not sabotage. <laughs> we have multiple people who use the resources oh, here, kidding. so it gets kidding. to be a little crazy. But uh, so, welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. First announcement: People have been calling, screaming, ranting, raving, hollering. They want, absolutely, one hundred percent want that one-hour special. Monday, eleven a.m. here on Channel ninety-five, you will have that one-hour special. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're airing it then, and hopefully, we'll be playing more often. There is no live broadcast that day, so we're putting it in there. Uh, it is a state holiday. It's uh, Patriots Day. No, not the New England Patriots. <laughs> uh, so. Be listen because I already forgot what we talked about. Yeah, that's good. You're, you're only you're only the guy from the Flint. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, and remember, nobody watches our show, but they go on WSAR and, and and say that the mayor won't hurt it, and we don't believe it. So let's get right to. A, I got a picture that I want to show. Ah. And, and you know, somebody sent it to me today. I don't know, it was some anonymous person. So I, I think it's interesting. There are those one million dollar brown yard waste bins that we don't know how much we owe on. That's right. That's what part of the how much we don't know we owe. But CJ, keep that picture up there. Let's let me a quick clean up here. I have to comment on something. Our our one of our anonymous callers that we we, we alluded to on the other show called us back and and said he now because I said well he said he introduced himself, gave his name. Uh, and they said, "Now you know me, and and uh, <laughs> and I buy I buy all the what do they say cruddy property? Which yeah, all the cru word? yeah all the crud property in Fall River and stuff. So, which is fine if you're buying property in Fall River. I wish you a lot of luck with it. However, we're gonna we're not gonna spend a lot of time. But you did make a comment that I that uh, I said Linda Pereira voted for it, and she was out with a brain. In. You know, I knew that. Uh, I actually said that she supported it." And, and if I did say she voted for it, I know I corrected myself later because I knew she was out for that surgery. However, she did go on media outlets, WSAR, and say it, and say it at the count that she would not have supported that budget. So with that, we'll put that to bed, but we're not gonna get into what he said, she said. If you call and point out something we're wrong about, we will admit we're wrong. Otherwise, we're not gonna, we're not gonna get into a, you know, you're not gonna become a contributor via telephone. And as far as knowing you, I don't. So I think the only way I'll actually get to know you is if you come down here, because we looked up your name, you're not registered to vote. You said you bought property. There's no property in your name at the, at the uh, you know, that's down at the, uh, um, the tax register, office. The, re yeah. the tax office, the register of deeds. Nothing's in your, not nothing's in your name. So I don't know if it's that's your, um, your, your. Uh, Nom de phone. It might be a witness <laughs> protection name. That's why it's not in there. But the fact is that uh, it's not in there. So you know, we we're always ready to debate. We're here Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, and at 11.30, we're out, and sometimes we go to lunch, and we've gone to lunch with people and discussed politics. So, you know, you're welcome to come down, and then we'll really get to know each other. But I have to comment on something, because even though CJ is quite capable of defending himself, you made a comment about, you went all the way back to the recall. So, and you said all CJ did during the recall was drive around in his truck. And I have to say, you know, I don't know who told you that. Probably who's someone who is taking credit for, the, for doing a lot in the recall that actually didn't do a lot in the recall. So let me explain something for the last time. There were about 25 people 
who did 98% of the work in the recall. And the recall would never have become a reality without those 25 or so people. Everybody who collected the signatures, and I don't mean people who showed up one day and did it for 20 minutes. I mean the people that were there every weekend, sometimes during the week, in the evening after work. Those people are the people that were instrumental in getting the signatures. But that wasn't the only thing. That was only securing the signatures. What a lot of people don't realize about the recall was the recall would have never been the recall if we didn't win the court case. So number one, it was CJ and I that interviewed attorneys that searched for an attorney who would do the work at a very, very low price <laughs> because we didn't have any money. This was a grassroots effort. So he interviewed, before the, before the process even began, we interviewed attorneys. And, and yeah, he drove his truck down to the interviews, but uh, <laughs> he worked. And then the most, one of the most important pieces, not the most important, but an integral part, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have come to fruition, is we had to win the court case. And in, order, and in order to win the court case, we had to maintain the integrity and a chain of, of who controlled the petitions, because that was brought up at the court case. Oh, you can't account for who touched these petitions, but we did. Every petition was numbered. Every petition was collected by either CJ or I, or turned into either CJ or I. CJ maintained a list of what petitions were out, what petitions were in. The people who were sitting around a kitchen table collating all the data that we needed for testimony in court contributed a tremendous amount to the case. And all these things were done behind the scenes. And I'm not saying that because CJ or I feel that we need more recognition. Every single one of those people, 25 people, are equally responsible for the success of the recall. And for the people who weren't intimately involved in a recall, you had no idea. We had how many petitions? 5,000 <laughs> or 5,500 signatures. Yeah. And we had to keep those, we had to keep that data maintain the integrity of that data, prove that they were being, that, that, that no one could tamper with that data, and it held up in court. So for you to make a statement like that, you were talking to probably one of the people who did very little in the recall and took a lot of credit. And I know that you also said you don't like my quotes, but I don't really care because <laughs> I like my quotes. So we're no longer going to deal with you on the air, and if you, uh, except if you point out something we're wrong at, which we will correct. But I will tell you one thing, because it applies to the people that probably you were talking to who tried to minimize what CJ did, because I'm not minimizing what anybody did. The people who put in hours and hours and hours into the recall deserve recognition. It was a team effort. And I'll, I'll close with another quote that you, you, you won't like. Victory has a thousand fathers. Defeat is an orphan. Because you know something? If we didn't win the recall, nobody would be looking to take credit for it. Nobody would be running around saying, I'm a recaller. So again, for the last time, and I've done it publicly many times, thank you to all the people that worked tirelessly to make it a success. And your work was rewarded by the 70% of the people who came to the polls and, and made the recall a success. But even if it wasn't a success, your work was valuable. You, you were part of the process, and thank you all. And as far as... Um, the uh, Mr. Anonymous, who remains anonymous, come on down and meet us. You know, we're always glad to meet new people. You know, we're very wow. friendly guys. <laughs> wow. You know what? Uh, two, almost two years later, and guess what? We're still talking about that. You know what? It's done. 
You know, when this happened, everybody became a recaller. And as I've always said, there are 13 recallers. The rest was support. You and I did a lot of work behind the scenes and everywhere else to make it happen. And we did research for the lawyer. We kept the cost down. But you know what? I never asked for any credit whatsoever. And I always say, we worked to fire a mayor and we did it. But let's move on because I'm, I'm getting nauseous talking about it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to talk right off the bat about some fun I had this morning. I walked around the city with a stack of envelopes. And you know what was in those envelopes? Complaints, complaints, complaints. <laughs> and you know, Mr. Schallenberg, I am going to give you a little bit of advice from the press. Before you open your mouth, say it's off the record. Because after you make the statement that you didn't want too many people at your meeting, you have created a storm. And this is in regards to the cemetery subcommittee meeting on the policies for Oak Grove Cemetery, which, by the way, don't exist. And uh, I'm, I've, I've got my schedule sneaking in and out behind me, so I think it's funny. <laughs> um, and he made the statement to a reporter at the Herald News, Deb Allard. Hi, Deb. Uh, that I've known Deb for years, and he made the prima facie case for anyone who's filing a 30A complaint, an open meeting law complaint, because he said clearly he didn't want the people there. Now, this is your government. And remember, these people are appointed by who? Who appoints the park board? Who appoints the park board? Anyone? Anyone? The Any mayor, answers? The mayor, the mayor. The mayor, the mayor, the mayor. The mayor, the mayor. The Remember, the mayor won't hurt anyone. Oh, wait a minute. I think he may just have. <laughs> so this is going to be very interesting to see how this is working out. But um, I had a bunch of 30A complaints on that, and I had a few other requests under 6610. And, you know, it's been a lot of fun making this happen. So... Um, I want to see what happens with, with this. But again, this is your city officials doing what they do best, denying the people the right to be heard. So, Mr. Schollenberg, you get today's award for open mouth, insert foot. So, I'm sure that there's some athlete's tongue out there for you. So, it's going to be interesting to handle. Now, let's go on to the page of throw enforcement. Chip, this is your favorite subject, so get ready because we are definitely, definitely going to hear some interesting scenarios of what's happening. So, Faust Fiore and Chris Paranoia, as I like to call him, it's Pereno, by the way, I do know his name, uh, was on the air with uh, Ken, I never tell the truth, Pacheco. <laughs> uh, sorry, Ken, you know, I do have a great deal of respect for you, but... In the city council meeting, you said that you'd do what the mayor tells you to do, and obviously the mayor threw you under the bus with the 60% uh, success rate or compliance rate of uh, purple bags. And today you go on uh, WSAR, Radio Pravda, as I like to refer to it, and you tell the people that 10 Lewiston Street can take your recyclables and your textile recyclables and your batteries and your lights. But meanwhile... The two, Mayor Jaisal Correa II, <laughs> Don't say the two. <laughs> turned around and told Helen Rigo in front of reporters that it is his plan to have 10 Lewiston Street, the city garage, no longer handle any of the city's sanitation issues. None. Zip, zero, zilch. That is not in their long-term plan. So, Mr. Pacheco, Mr. Fiore, and... Mr. Pereno, when are you going to tell the truth? When are you going to tell the truth? Okay, because the truth is clear to those who start looking at the numbers. But you know what? The citizens should not have to file a 6610 request every single time they want information. They should be able to go to you and say, tell me what this is. And don't stand behind, this is in negotiations, and oh, well, you got to wait 10 days for us to get it to you. And, oh, and we're going to charge you outrageous money. You know what? This is the people's information. And when you lie to the people, you take your credibility and you shoot it out the window. And that isn't acceptable. And then for the city administrator, and this is where I'm going to bring the rest of the guys in now, for the city administrator to turn around and say, 
I don't have the numbers on how much we owe. You, you honestly, you don't know how much we owe. How much money did we bond? We're getting 1.1 million dollars. Okay, and Can she you said close this. Close up. Close up. Herald and, News article. And she said this in the Herald News article. So come on, get real, people. Uh, close up. Can uh, that little closer? A little closer. Can we get it? Uh, there you go. That's uh, a, still that's, researching. <laughs> We're still researching. So we have a treasurer and auditor. A financial team. Mary's no, we don't have a treasurer. He was well, fired. Yeah, well, a pseudo treasurer. They're, you know, pseudo treasurer. And we're and we're, we're, we're signing documents which may or may not be legal. Legal, exactly. May or not may or may not be legal since you're required to have a treasurer. But the fact is that we have a financial team. You know, you know, like I said, you can you can put. No, the financial team is Mary Sahadi. Dog, it's still a pig. We got a finance. We got a whole bunch of people getting paid. To, 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 to look over our finances. We have a city administrator who is being paid to administer. We have a financial, we have a financial team made up of a whole bunch of people. That is, uh, we have, a, we have a, a budget of almost a quarter of a billion dollars or something like that. And, and how do we run the, the railroad? What do we keep saying? How can anybody support this move to privatization until we get our financial house in order. Again, the words, the words forensic audit. How can we not know how much we owe? Do any of you know, you don't know how much, Carlos, do you know how much you owe? No, I don't know. Oh, you don't know? Oh, yeah, I don't know either. You know why? I, I, because I have so much money. That's right. That I don't know. And you know why you never know? With people who don't know how much they owe are people who don't pay their own bills. That's right. Those are the people. Your children probably don't know how much you owe, and they don't care. That's and guess what? The city of Fall River doesn't care how much they owe either, because every time they find out they owe, they tax us and increase fees. This is the problem with what we have in the city of Fall well, River. Well, I, I can tell you right now, Right off the bat in sanitation, we owe at least a million dollars because we just bonded for those babies. Well, we, <laughs> and, and, and we, we paid, what, $5 million for the trucks? How can you have, how can you run a city? How can you put together a budget and, make, and have the mayor and the city administrator saying we have absolutely no idea how much money we owe on this and then say you're going to save this much on, the pro, on, on this project of by privatizing. The fact is that the cost, that is one of the, and I'll use Mary Sahadi's term in a correct sense, that's a financial liability that we've incurred that has to be factored in to your overall savings. I thought we, that are, we are eating the cost of those trucks that we basically just gave away. And I want to know how they managed to price $5 million worth of trucks at $1.3 million. Two, one point two million. No, no. But, oh, was that was the? It was one point two million. They sold it for one point one. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was one point three. Okay. I don't want an anonymous phone call saying you were wrong. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, we get. All right. Well, you know, well, 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 what's a hundred thousand between friends? That's anyways? right. Yeah, you know, we don't know how much we owe. We don't care about that. So, but I mean, this is this is ludicrous. And I thought the definition of liability was city employee. Yeah, that's or, right. Or at least DCM employee, but that's well, that, don't us, get me going on that again. And, and, okay. But it's you know this is this is just inexcusable. The people need to rise up. The city council needs to stand up. How can we do this? You know, Mary Sahadi and her company audited this city for years. They never got it right, and apparently she got rehired, and she's not doing it right again. We can't figure out how much we owe. What are we going to have to do? Hire a subcommittee to determine how much we owe? I thought that we, when we had a budget, we knew exactly how much we owed. That's supposed to be part of our budget. We should have known. And as they're projecting next year's budget, we're still... What is this? It's, is, it, is it April? Yep. Is it April? Not April. And we're preparing next year's budget, and we don't know how much. So was that even going to be a factor until somebody asked the question? And then they go in front of the citizens of Fall River and say, this is what we're saving, and they expect us to believe it. Yeah. And I, ha I have to say this, and, and, you know, I'm not too smart. I'm not too smart. But I want to put a question to everybody that are listening to us right now. And the question is, if you bought a car, and I, li I like just to simplify with small numbers, 
get out of the million numbers and come down to 20,000. You buy a car to pay in five years. You have a car for one year, you have four more years of payment, and you're gonna sell that car for $1,000. You bought it for 20, okay? You're gonna pay them for five years, one year into the contract, you're gonna sell that car for $1,000. You will really do that? Well, the, the, but the, yeah, you, you may do that, but you're going to owe those car payments for another four years. You're going to be then, taking the bus, and you're going to be. And you're still going to pay. Another and you're four still going to pay, and it's still. Are you going to make that deal? And, it, and it's still a liability, and it has to be deducted from your finance. When you sell that car for a thousand dollars, you don't sell the bill. Yep. You only sold the car for a thousand, so you That's deduct a thousand from yours. So let's say round figures that you owed. Fifteen thousand on the car. Mm -hmm. You sell it for a thousand. You still owe fourteen thousand. And if you haven't figured that out, that you have to figure it into your budget. You're, so the the you know they're going to be coming for you. And, and the I'm bank's going to be coming this. for you. You know why a lot of people do bankruptcies? I'm going to tell you why. Because you cannot afford to pay your house. Okay, the bank take over your house. Your mortgage is for one hundred fifty thousand. They sell the house. For a hundred thousand and 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 an auction, you still responsible for fifty thousand dollars on that mortgage. So that's why the lawyer comes. That's why you contact the lawyer, and they're going to tell you the only way you have to get out of this bill is do bankruptcy. Very simple. Except if you're a government, and then if you're a government, no, you have everybody else. Then paying you for have the bill, everybody so. else. You drive everybody else into bankruptcy, exactly. and when you succeed in bankrupting virtually everybody in the community, then you go bankrupt, mm -hmm. and you declare receivership. And who takes it on the chin again? The people that you bankrupted, because this is what happens, and this is what happened in Detroit. They allowed them to misspend and misappropriate and misspend until they finally ran the city into the toilet. And every city that's declared receivership, if you look at the way they handled their finances, there was a total disregard. There was never a true audit. There was never a, a, a forensic audit. There was never any accountability. And there was never a consequence for them doing things like this. This is absolutely incredible. This is absolutely incredible incredible that they, the mayor of the city of Fall River will say he has no idea about how much he owes when he's trying to change how we do that business yet he doesn't know what is what his liabilities are by eliminating our DP DCM or DPW this is just I mean you know I that's that the great coming. thing about being a government official you can be the worst business sure. man in the world and the only people that pay for it are the, are the and taxpayers. I know that was coming because every time that we had a question for, for Mr. Nunes he never had the numbers with him he always will I will find out I will find out and we never ended getting the and numbers. he never came back with that's the answers why <laughs> we, that's why they don't know the numbers and, but at every number they give you you can't trust this is why I say we need we need to demand a forensic audit of the city because let's go back 95 percent compliance rate with the bags how many times was that said in front of the council when people were saying how are we doing with the purple bags how many times did they say 90 95 percent compliance rates okay and now when they want to get rid of dcm oh we've only got a 60 percent compliance rate so they manipulated the figures. Kathy Ann's still researching. And by the way, Kathy Ann is on tape during a financial meeting saying that they hide money, city money, during negotiations. So they can, they can say that they don't have money to give pay raises. So if they manipulate money in the health care fund, if they hide money, to not give an accurate picture of the city's finances all the time. How can you ever trust any number that any city official ever brings to you? Because you can't. We need an independent, not some state hack. Don't call down a politician. Well, Ray uh, Hagen Sahadi do a wonderful job. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, you can see that. <laughs> yeah, we can see that again. But I mean, you know, we need an independent audit. But just as when we did the Blue Cross, we hired 
Ernst and Young, one of the wow. one of the most reputable uh, accounting firms in the world, and we had to pay big bucks. But you know something? When their numbers came in, and by the way, Jerry Jerry McGovern, their chief accountant, who did an audit of the entire state of Tennessee, who was the guy who who, who uh, oversaw our audit, made a statement to me after about two days. He said, "I have never seen in my entire career," and he's audited entire states. He said, "I've never seen a city with." with bookkeeping practices that that they don't even have them they said they're all in they throw slips into a into a file cabinet and actually the personnel director at the time actually told him to go and sit in front of the file cabinet and dump them all on the floor and go through them i mean so can we really ever account for anything and remember, I mean, it, that was five hundred dollars an hour. He was going to be sorting through papers. So, that's right. but you know, I, the thing I think is, is really funny. I think we need to, to to be very clear on this because everyone's saying, "Well, oh look, Sean Kadeem is now fighting for us because he pointed out that there's four million dollars." And remember, Sean Kadeem is the same same guy who went up to the state house and said, "We're in debt for five hundred million dollars or whatever it may have been." Yeah, it was five hundred million, I believe. Was it? Was it? Yeah, five hundred million. Five hundred million dollars. So just do it anyways. It doesn't matter if it, it screws the retirees, the pension system. You do what we're telling you to do. And they said, you can't do that. You just can't do it. And he said, do it anyways. Because again, another political hack who wants to do what he wants to do, and he doesn't care whose feet he steps on. Well, at least and we have that on record. Yeah. We have it on record. So you know what? Don't say, oh, you're picking on Sean Kadeem now, too. No, because you know what? When you say it, you own it. And if you can't own what you say and admit to it, then keep your mouth shut. Well, we, we have witnesses. Ask Schellenberg. He'll tell you. We, we, have, we have witnesses to that meeting. Actually, um, actually, our entire state representative delegation was there, and our state senator was there, as was uh, another state senator who actually drafted a bill that we were discussing. And also, Linda Pereira was there. And uh, we actually another one who works for the people, you know, and that and, and we actually rode up together. So when I said that we don't, you know, it's it's strictly it's strictly politics. It's not personal shows because we actually wrote the Boston together that day uh, and she was at the meeting. So uh, the fact is that, look, um, Sean Kadeem does probably know the bonding because he's the guy that got all the bonds. Uh, I don't agree with his with his. Uh, philosophy of bonding everything all the time because you know, then you you get uh you know debt that you can never pay off however you know i think financially you know it, he he knows how much the bonds were and he and they're all capable of doing and like i said it's not rocket science all you got to do if you keep in records is go and see how much the bond was how much your payments are, how much you've paid, and deduct it from the final court. I mean, you should get a bank statement, or you should get some kind of statement. You know, on your mortgage, you get a statement, how much you paid, how much you owe on your mortgage. I mean, I don't think, you're still researching. How long does it take to figure that out? Well, it if takes you a very long time when you don't want to give the answer. That's when it takes a long and, time. And when you use the Fall River system of, of, of accounting. So <laughs> you got to find the, the bin. But, you know, this is, this is what happens. And, you know, it makes it very difficult for the people of Fall River to start putting any trust in their elected officials. But meanwhile, remember, people, you're the nitwits who elected them, even though you know they're lying. And, you know... Uh, real quick, because we don't have a lot of time, uh, the Charter Commission last night, I guess, uh, all of a sudden, we're now important, Chip. <laughs> you know, that's another thing I think that may fail miserably, because these nine people are doing what they want. So, oh, well, well, thank you. Remember, Monday, we are not on live. We are airing our one-hour special union busting. And please remember, stay angry. And Carlos, enjoy New Hampshire. Thank you. Stay angry. And remember, if you need a loan, we're still researching. <laughs>